This is the second video in the set of making up the the handlebar risers for our GPX 750R. We've already got some of the spacers in there. On the previous video, I showed how to make more spacers. And today, I have some time after shoveling out the, uh, the house. I have a spare part that I want to make a, a little reveal here for it. Now, I also have to figure out what I'm going to do about the key, because what will happen is the key will be buried too far down. I'm going to have to raise that up or make a longer key. So there will be several little detail changes, and I'm going to actually get to install these. The last thing is going to be to put a longer brake hose on that side. The other side is fine. I don't know why one side is longer than the other. Who knows? Now on the spare bike, it looks like the key is in there with some either some rivets or some blind bolts. I don't know yet. If that's going to be a problem, something I'll, uh, I'll ask people like Luciano that have done a lot of this kind of stuff. And I'm trying to avoid working out in the garage for an obvious reason. <laughs> There's snow inside the garage. It snowed, <laughs> snowed on my RD the other day. Look at this. There's snow everywhere. A great day to have an indoor project. So let's see what we can come up with. So by looking at this with a flashlight, I can see there's some kind of pop rivets in there. And I'm not going to deal with that right now because I want to get out of this freezing garage. It was 7 degrees this morning when I came out here. And it's why this time of year, I always like to have some indoor projects. So this is what we got done on part one. And this is the next part of the project. And then I can see that, that resolving that key issue is going to be something I didn't really think was going to be a big deal. But one of the ways to resolve it might be just to make a longer key extension. We'll see. Today, I want to look at extending this part down, making that little reveal on it. Now, the first step, anytime I work on anything, especially where there's going to be glue joints or grinding or who knows what. I want to get all the grease and oil. Since we already used this has already been part of the motorcycle for when I did the original restoration. Now it's a spare part. So I have two of them if I screw this one up or I want to make a different one. This can actually be my prototype. Now it's it's something that's because it's a cosmetic part, I wanna I wanna I'm gonna to try to bend a piece of aluminum or steel. It's got to go out an inch on each side, a little over an inch, and then have a radius on the bottom and be about an inch, maybe an inch and a half. What I'll try to do is make it a little bigger than I think it has to be, because what I'm going to have to do is ultimately sand this whole part down. Always good to start with clean stuff, no matter what you do. And I see I've already done a couple of repairs on this already, so this everything is repaired here. By the way, I was looking at, this This is really an unrelated thing, something you might want to check out. I dialed up YouTube and I looked up Suzuki GS1100E 1982. And boom, up comes up this highly modified, it, it's got the original, the tan paint. But the guy looks like he put all GSX parts, front end, did the motor. Looks like he spent 20 grand on it. And it's out there, and then at the end of it, it's a little show, is a little photo show of doing the restoration. Something you might be interested in. So, first thing is, I see there's a big crack in the paint. I'm going to get some 600 paper, sand this all down before I even start. Now, some 600 sandpaper will knock this down. Again, I got all the grease off it. That's step one, as it always is some wet and dry sandpaper, since we're going to repaint it. Uh, by the way, you may hear some banging in the background. We have a uh, our good friend Walter here installing some carpet. And he's hammering away and banging away. But I told him, hey, you know, have, have some mercy on that house. This is a 100-year-old house. It actually turned 100 at New Year's. So we have a 100-year-old house, and finally we're getting to do some of the upgrades we waited. We've been working on this house 27 years. Still not done. Anyway, I want to start with the part all scuffed up as much as possible. I don't have to take the finish off of this, that's for sure. And I'm pretty sure that ultimately this part is going to get painted gloss black anyway, so. 
Now you can see on this piece, and I don't want to dry it off, there's, there is a little crack right there. But if now, here's what would happen. If I were to leave that crack and I paint this, the paint is going to skin over it. But then eventually it's going to crack again. So we're going to, I'm going to show how I would repair that crack. It's a crack in the paint. First thing, whenever you're doing this kind of a repair, get it hot. The heat will get rid of any of the moisture that's down in that crack. A very important part of doing this. I see the other side's got a little crack too. Because I want to start, obviously I want to start with this piece being as solid as possible. Now, once I have that, and you can see where that crack is. Now what we need to do, and this is thin, Rodak Thin CA, cyanoacrylate. Anybody that ever built a model airplane knows what that is. But a lot of motorcyclists don't. But once you introduce them to it, they realize, wow, it's good stuff. Now, I let that sit on there like a droplet. Now, the, the dust in the Q-tip is going to kick that off. And it's capillary, so what's going to happen? It's going to go right down into that crack. That crack is now sealed. You don't want to hold it because it'll glue itself right to it. Press down just a little bit. And now we can get out that block, a sanding block, and get a perfectly flat surface on that. Little cosmetic repair. And by the way, if you don't have any of this, it comes thin, medium, and thick. Two ounce tube. You can get it from Brodac.com. Now the next thing is to have any kind of a little flat surface. This is a flat rubber squeegee. I'm going to basically detail out and get all the corners and edges on this. Because this is a part that you're really going to see. and I'm going to see it as I'm riding a motorcycle. So if I could possibly make it perfect, we'll at least try our best on it anyway. But the rubber part helps me get down into the notches, into the cracks, get it all sanded flat before I make up that reveal piece on the back. And I'm thinking about that key. It may be that moving that key is, because there's nothing to put it up in here, I may have to either make a bracket or I've been thinking about make, just making a longer key. It's starting to sound better and better again. But <laughs> time will tell. See, that's the fun of working on a project. You don't know what the answer is going to be. It's not like building a house where at the end you know what the house is going to look like. Every one of these motorcycles, in the course of building it or modifying it or restoring it, whatever you want to call it, they, it takes on a life of its own, and it takes on, like, wow, I didn't think I'd do that. Wow, the wheels look great gold. Wow, oh, I really don't like the wheels gold. It goes back and forth, back and forth, and sometimes you go back and, and you say, well, I didn't like the whole project. Well, that's what's nice about a thing like this. Inexpensive, almost no money. You don't like it at the end? It's not like buying a $500 uh, Rizoma part, and then you, you put it on a bike, and you go, I really didn't like that. So what I did, I cut up a Cheerios box to make a template of what I think this part is going to look like. But I've got to go back out to the tundra and just see where I want this to end. And do I want a radius there or what thickness do I want? I really have to do just a little test fit. Well, it looks like this dimension is okay. I want to end this and I'll mark this with an ink marker. And I want that to have a little bit of a radius on the bottom. Well, that's roughly the shape right there. Now, remember when I originally did the restoration, I had this part green, and when I, I don't remember why, I put the other part on the black one. I don't know if it looks better green or black. Gotta think about this. And I'm always careful to have plenty of touch-up paint for every project I work on. And here's a good example of today of why I would I want to have the choice of making it black or green or actually I can make it that blue color. It doesn't really matter right now. I'm doing this this little project in steps, and and hopefully at some point in time I'll have all the parts I need and be able to just do this whole fitting in one day. Now it's the same thing with our other project that's going on at the same time. This is the Evil Twin project. I'm trying to get all the parts, all the buffing done, everything ready. And then in one day, 
do the swap. Well, it's the same thing with our other project. I took a whole day and made those parts up. I looked online desperately to see if I could find those parts from Kawasaki. Not happening. This is our alternative. And if you haven't seen part one of this, that, that part one shows how to make those parts up very conveniently. So back to our Cheerios box. Now we know we got the part prepped. It looks like there'll be a good glue seam in there, though that won't be a problem. So now I just need to decide, do I want to make this part out of, well, I could make it out of a Cheerios box. But I think aluminum, see because it has a bend in it, aluminum will be nice and I can make it symmetrical. I can put that little radius in the bottom. So let me go to the scrap bin and see what I have. So by, by making this, that I have a little cardboard pattern now, it just makes it a little bit easier. And again, I can, I could make this, make it out of carbon fiber if I wanted to, could make it out of aluminum. I've got a lot of choices. Since it's a relatively simple part, and I want to make it symmetrical from the bend, it's a good way to make it symmetrical. And I'm eyeballing it at the same time. So I just need, I like to have just a little radius in the bottom, not much. And that gives me a relatively symmetric, I'll put a little more radius in there. All in the eye of the beholder anyway. The only guy that's going to notice this is Turbo Steve. Okay, so that'll have that. Then I can then glue that on there, reinforce it in the back. Sand it and it'll be ready to paint. And it sounds like this will not be that difficult to uh, to do. Everything looks easy when it's done. In fact, those guys upstairs are hammering away on that carpet, boy. Okay, so this will be our center line. We know that's our bend line. We know this will be our cut line. I'll go over to the little jigsaw, cut that up. And it will decide what radius we'd like to have in here. Although I'll probably just eyeball it. I just want to rough get this bend in here. Since I'm going to grind that down anyway, it won't really matter. I need more angle. If I wasn't going to sand this part and clean it all up, I would heat this with a with map gas. But since I'm not going to worry about that right now, get that angle, and it looks like we're, woo! Now the trick with bending this is never grab it out at the end, or this this will radius. You want to get it as close if you want a nice sharp bend, of course. And if you're gonna, if you want it to be cosmetically nice, which this doesn't have to be. Okay, we're going just a little bit too far. Too far is no problem. Okay, we ate on the money. And the whole idea of this is just to expose raw aluminum for the glue side, the side we're going to glue, and the part that's going to get primed and painted. This is an undone side and one that's scratched. Now, if I were to epoxy this piece to a painted surface, what's going to happen? It's going to be no stronger than the paint itself. So the first thing is I want to take off the paint and I want to 
get the back of this etch that I've taken some 180 sandpaper, and I'll do this by hand. I want the back of this to be rough. If it's not rough, the epoxy that I'm going to use is not going to get a good footprint, a good hold on it. And anytime you're gluing anything, you never want to glue two smooth surfaces. You always want to have something that's etched. And the deeper the etches, the deeper the teeth, the better. Now in this case, I got to do both sides of this because I'm going to put some reinforcing resin in the back here when this is, once it's dry. Now while Walter upstairs was taking his little coffee break, he came down to look at some of the stuff we do here in the shop. I'm impressed with his carpeting work. I'm not sure he was impressed with restoring his old bikes. But anyway, now I got a nice surface for the epoxy. Now, this is Brodak 5 minute epoxy. That's all we need for a job like this. Just to get that part put in place. Walter is hammering away. I'm getting a headache. I forgot how much fun it is to do carpet work. Although Ray would probably remind me. Anyway, the reason I'm using epoxy and not CA, I just I think in this application I'm going to be able to build a reinforcement around it a little bit easier. And all of the model airplane epoxies are aircraft grade epoxies. They'll they'll be fine for this. But I wouldn't want to make it that in the middle of a ride this is just going to fall off or something. Now, I will have to babysit this. That means I'm going to have to hold it in position for about you know, seven or eight minutes till it's nice and solid. And this is a, the way I would always suggest you do is any kind of epoxy joint, get epoxy on one side, kind of a significant thing. Put that up there for now. The part that's going to get our, and we've roughed this up, get both sides epoxied and then hold them together because if they start going off to one side or getting crooked or whatever, you're in big trouble. Now, but the most important thing with any epoxy is to have a rough surface. A sanded, the, the rougher the better. And now to just hold this in place, and obviously I won't let the camera run, but... And I already checked that I have the same amount of material on both sides. I'll get this right in position. Now the part is all nice and solid. Except I don't want to take a chance. I'm going to put a little carbon fiber reinforcement in the back here. And I don't need to be fancy about it. It's not a part you're going to see. And we have plenty of carbon fiber to work with. Now it's always a good idea too, whenever you have epoxy, if you're not familiar with using epoxy, make sure this is, this always tells you that the glue that's in there dried since it came from the same mix. Uh, I can just get a little this will be relatively easy. We've done this on every one of Vlad's fairings and Mark's stuff, so very easy to do. Take a little piece of carbon fiber, some epoxy. That'll ensure that we never have this break. It better never break. Now, while this is drying, I've got some, some extra epoxy here. Whoop. Had some extra epoxy. This will just reinforce it even more. Again, I wouldn't want to be riding down, uh, you know, down 106 and all of a sudden this part comes off and one of my friends is wearing it for a uh, <laughs> set of false teeth or something. Anyway, a little heat always will help pick the epoxy off. Now we'll just hang on to this until this dries. 
Now before we actually go paint this, I wanted to show this little trick, I guess a trick tip. It's a little sticky back sandpaper. You buy a roll of sticky back, any grit, this, this happens to be 220. What this is gonna allow me to do, and I'm gonna try to, see what I wanna do is I don't wanna make this look like it's a, an additional part. After it's painted, I want this to blend in. So what I did, I filled this seam up with thin CA and I'm just using a block to true it up right now. I admit, tiny detail. None of these things are really uh, earth shattering, but boy, I was upstairs looking at this carpet job. Wow. I'll try to if he finishes this today. I don't know if he is. What a job. A lot more fun working on motorcycles and putting carpeting in, as Ray knows. Anyway, we're almost ready for primer, but I want to make sure every surface is smooth, rough, and ready to take a coat of primer. Now you, can't, you can't really see the can because we've been using this can for uh, medicinal purposes in our painting. Anyway, I do want to, before I actually put the primer on here, and I'll use the seal, the, the Duplicolor Sealer Primer. That'll be a good, just to seal this up too. I think we really got the shape that I was looking for pretty well here. And again, this is one of those little details. It's a small, tiny detail. And if you get it right, the, it adds to the bike's, uh, I think, the appearance. And, and if you get it wrong, it can really look terrible. But, but we have two of them, so in the worst of all worlds, <laughs> in the worst of all worlds, we'll just make another one. Well, this is the primer, and I'm telling you, one thing that doesn't feel like we got much left in there, I'm going to have to get a couple more cans. But another thing that's important, you need to be able to hold this part. If you notice, there's almost no way to hold it and no way to let it dry. So what I did in the past, I used the same glue joint, in fact. Just glue a piece of balsa wood to it or something, glue something to it so you can hold it while you paint it. <laughs> Lucky for us, we had just enough primer to prime this. And that's going to, of course, dry overnight. Way too cold to paint out there today. Just not in a mood to get pneumonia, but now, so what we have actually done in the last couple of days is make a kit so that that day comes when we're going to put this all back together. And we still need to get the bolts anyway from Bolt Depot. If you haven't bought bolts from Bolt Depot, great prices, great bolts. So what we really have here today is two kits. We got the Evil Twin kit. What we need is the Evil Twin weather. We need some weather here. So while everything, while everything's drying here, Karen just yelled down at me, come on up and check out the rugs. I think I'll do that. These are the old rugs that are going, and look at the new rugs. Whoa. Beautiful. Stairway to heaven. <laughs> wow. Looks great, guys. Okay. Wow, Karen, it looks great. So check this out. Boy, this this was some job. Mama mia. And anybody that ever did carpeting, I know Ray knows, to do stairs where there's a pattern match. Oh man. So all that hammering you heard on the back of the video, now it all comes to play. What a job they did. Wow. Spectacular. So the day ends, the rugs are in, the primer's dry. Our two projects that are now underway, all we're waiting for that is some weather. We can go out and get that painted. So I hope you enjoyed the video and enjoy these winter projects because it's a lot more fun than a day on Rikers Island. And thanks for watching.